K-I-L-R Taylor Games Hello gamers, simmers, and pilots, I am the Killer Gamer, and welcome to the World Tour, well, not quite, but <laughs> we're going to call it a World Tour anyway. It is of Sierra Pro Pilot. This is a uh, alternative uh, flight simulator, as opposed to the Microsoft uh, version, that came out in 1997. I know this is Pro Pilot USA, but I'm going to get to that. So here is the original uh, Pro Pilot right here. Okay. And it's got 98 there in the corner. Sometimes you'll find them without that. But this is the big box version of Pro Flight. And what is very interesting is even though this is uh, done by Sierra which uh, is known for the popular King's Quest and Space Quest series and uh, oh they did the uh, the ultimate pinball I believe that's what it was called the ultimate pinball series even though that this is done by Sierra you may find it very interesting that on the back of the box here in the, the corner you can see that it's done by Sublogic. So Sublogic uh, teamed up with Sierra to put out a flight simulator as a um, com competitor to Microsoft. And this was this was in 1997 so this was uh, pretty much competing with uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator for Windows 95. Um, 98 hadn't come out yet uh, so with that in mind I had originally uh, made a video with the pro pilot uh, original pro pilot version and it's buggy it's glitched the brakes don't seem to work on it when you use them it just doesn't work uh, the plane spins this way and that way with absolutely no control whatsoever uh, when you're on the ground. It seems to be okay when you're up in the air. And Chicago itself just looks odd. It, it, it looks like it's made out of bricks. <laughs> the graphics for it just, they just don't look right. Uh, you know, they it just looks like... The, I don't know, like maybe they're old 1930s or I don't know, whatever style. It just looks like they're made out of bricks. It doesn't look the way that you think it should. Um, 
some of the other differences are the pause menu the pause menu happens to be this uh, uh, big graphic that comes up uh, which is actually different uh, later on uh, but other than that there are patches that allow you to patch uh, the pro pilot there's like a patch 1.1 1. Uh, one and a 1.2 and a 1.3 that's what we're getting into pro pilot USA which is this right here so pro pilot USA is pretty much the patched version of pro pilot it's nothing it's really nothing special it's the same program with the same airports it doesn't go uh, any further than that it's just it's patched it has uh, a newer uh, Cessna 172 on there but other than that it's I mean you look at the back of the boxes and it's almost word for word the same where it talks about hundreds of cities 29 photorealistic metropolitan cities yeah. and this one here says with more than 20 square miles of detail um, although the, the original ProFlight one says each with more than 60 square miles of detail so I don't know could be uh, quite interesting on which one's got more detail than the other I, I think it's just a wording thing uh, I think you know the inch it's like everything is the same essentially and just the the opening uh, titles here it says pro pilot USA take off the USA and it's pro you know it, it looks exactly the same so it's not like pro pilot uh, 99 which has a completely different looking uh, box or pro pilot uh, 2000 so I've got pro pilot 99 I don't have 2000 yet but we'll be doing uh, videos on those as well so okay with all that uh, out of the way uh, let's go ahead and jump right into this simulator you're cleared for takeoff and so this is where we uh, start off with and we can go in here into uh, airspace look at position aircraft and we can see that we're right over here now if I click this these are all the airports that are on uh, this simulator all these little dots so this is how many airports that you got and uh, some of them are off in the Canada as you can see right up here uh, but there's nothing else uh, other than that there's there's no Japan there's no Hawaii there's no Western Europe there's nothing in Mexico although there's a few things on the border there so it's kind of close but you've got enough here to keep you busy I mean definitely but you won't be doing any actual world tours um, so this is kind of like uh, us doing the uh, the sub logic uh, simulators uh, or, <laughs> or Microsoft uh, flight simulator 2 or 3 where we're limited to the sub logic scenery discs and and even some of those are missing like 8 and 10 so like uh, what was it uh, like 8 8 is over in this area here and it's missing and 10 is down in this area and it's missing but at least on this one we have full USA coverage so we'll be able to follow the tour um, as much as we can with all the other simulators and uh, then we'll be doing something uh, kind of a little bit different um the later simulators are going off in the Canada and we'll coming we'll be coming back down into the Dakotas and that's kind of where our simulator will be going it'll be following right up uh right up to the Canada level and then it will be flying over into the Dakotas which is where those simulators will come back to and then we'll work our way back around uh, to La Crosse uh, is it Wisconsin La Crosse Wisconsin which is where uh, the flight simulator uh, two and three originally had to stop because there was no scenery north of that 
And so then we'll be uh, following the flight plan that those simulators are doing. So it's a little confusing, but for the most part, I'm trying to keep the flight plans as close to each other as possible without limiting one or the other. We're trying to do it as much as that we can so that way you guys uh, can look at this flight from this simulator and then look at it with this simulator and just kind of see you know how it looks different and uh, and just be able to compare them but anyway so default uh you're over here that looks i believe this is a uh, san francisco so we'll just come over here and zoom in and yep san francisco that is where we're at so you can zoom in here and you can see all the different airports. You can, I mean, this will seem very familiar to uh, Flight Simulator 2002, 2004, FSX and Prepared, where you've got uh, that flight plan map and you can uh, turn everything on. Like, here's your VORs, here's your NDBs, ILSs. Oh, well, that's grayed out. I can't click on that. Waypoints, <laughs> salad, um, vector routes, frequencies. That's actually kind of, kind of useful. I don't, I don't remember. Uh, that's that's actually very cool. I don't, I don't think the Microsoft Flight Simulator actually puts the ATIS ones on there. That's very very useful. I think. So yeah, you can put all that on there. Um, you can click on this for airports and then click on one and it will say, okay, uh, you've got a couple of uh, runways here. You can select what you want and go to it. Uh, and then we've got on route tracking, ILS approach. So there's, there's all that there. So we're gonna zoom out here and we're going to go in and set ourselves up at, as you would guess, Merrill C. Megs, which is CGX. So we'll go ahead and we'll click on that. Click on this. And we start off on runway 36, just like on all of them. Click on go to. And boom, there we are. We're right on runway 36. Uh, very familiar, as everyone <laughs> recognizes this. And you'll see right off the bat that the downtown Chicago area looks much better uh, than what it was on the uh, original unpatched version of ProPilot. And this is the old 172. This is the default 172 that came with uh, ProPilot. There is an enhanced version, and uh, we'll show that on the next flight after uh, Chicago O'Hare. So I want to give you guys a chance to see the original version, um, and then from there uh, we'll move to the more advanced version. Well, it's not much advanced, but you know it has a little bit more controls and stuff on there. But now that we got that, what we're going to go ahead and do is take a look at the menu options here. So you can turn your crash detection on and off. For the moment, I'm turning it off because it's still getting a little used to the simulator. It, it, it's nice, it's fun, but it's not as great as Microsoft Flight Simulator, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, you've got system reliability, so you can go in here and... Uh, change things in here. This is all very, very interesting. Uh, and we will we'll need to kind of play around with this as, as we uh, fly. Uh, let's see. You can select partial panel. What this does is you can start covering your instruments. This kind of reminds me of the... Uh, hey, Sublogic was behind this. So with the old Sublogic, you could... Um, make something go out and it just like covers it up or you know makes it disappear and this is along the same lines 
So you got your airspace. Uh, we looked at positioning the air uh, the aircraft. You can select your airports here. Just kind of type in uh, the code or the name of the airport, and uh, you'll be on your way. Now, not all the airports that we're flying to in the other simulators show up here, and some of them are like the really tiny ones that you would expect would not show up. But what surprises me is the one airport you think would be here in the Chicago area is not here. IKK, Kankakee. How could that not be in here? <laughs> it's, it's the midpoint between Chicago and Champaign. I mean, come on. It's by the, by the river. The Vore is there, but the airport is not there. That is kind of... That is very disappointing. Um, and I have not... So far, I've not found any way to be able to add custom content to this. So the most that we're, and, and that's one of the airports that we're that we're flying to in all the simulators, and this one doesn't have it. Uh, neither does the default. I was hoping that between the regular Pro Pilot and Pro Pilot USA, that it might have added some airports like this one, Kankakee. No, it didn't add it at all. So. It's not there. We'll have to have. We'll worry about that when we get to that part of the uh, uh, of the series. But we can cancel out of that. You've got your weather, so you can select your surface conditions, winds, aloft, clouds. We'll get back to planning. Uh, here's all your views. Um, so you and, and we'll go through this um, as we're um, flying got your outside cam, your tower camera. You can set up some cams here. So we'll click on this and here we go for you've got the four all all, all of your ca cameras there and you can select oh okay, one it here, one it here, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. You can do panoramic camera tra camera transitions when moving from one to the other. So, you know, you can do some uh, play around with it and do some cinematics. Uh, if you want the flyby set your tower to be up in the air and you'll um, you'll you'll get the plane going by so good stuff show gps display so there is a gps uh, right on this you don't need to uh, get a third party add-on to uh you know or download something to have a gps added to your flight sim this already comes with it so that is pretty nice and then your options so selecting your pilot this is basically like like selecting your saved game is practically what that is auto complexity just changes the uh, complexity of the graphics depending upon where you're at I turn that off and I go over here um, I don't know what the alternate graphics are we'll look at that later I go over to scenery graphics and I just click maximum and I just go with that. And you got your brightness, your sound, flight controls is your joystick yoke and stuff, daylight um, where you can select, you know, dawn, day, dusk, night. You can be more specific with date and time. Time acceleration allows you to speed up, you know, those very long flights. Slew, okay, slew is always good. And then your pause. So now let's go back to planning. <clears throat> now you can just jump into this and fly if you want. You don't have to do anything special, but if you want to create a flight plan and be able to get some air traffic control to go along with it, what you're going to want to do is create yourself a flight plan. It's just like uh, Pro Flight 98 for a Flight Simulator 98. Um, it's not as robust as it, but Again, this simulator is a nice little complete package. Uh, uh, if you're wanting to fly mostly in the USA, it's got a GPS. Um, it will generate weather. You'll see a lot of similarities in this when you compare it to Flight Simulator 98 with Pro Flight uh, 98. So let's go ahead and create a flight plan. So you can select VFR or IFR. We're going to select IFR. <clears throat> what 
we have the Cessna 172 Skyhawk. That is the original plane. Uh, the updated version is called the 172R. Cruise settings. Altitude. We're going to make that 3,000. Uh, power. I don't really too much worry about that. 70%. I just leave it there. And now we're going to say, all right, so what's our departure point? Well, our departure point is going to be Merrill C. Meggs. And this also, keep in mind, this gives you your ATIS, your ground, your tower, and approach. Uh, you can uh, write these down if you want. <coughs> but you have a co-pilot that automatically changes these on the radio for you. And you can turn off that selection if you want. Where are we going? So we're going to go to Chicago O'Hare. So there it is. We got it set. Again, here's all your communication radios. Click on Next. Um, you can uh, adjust this um, if you want. We're not going to worry about that. Click Next. Now, this is where uh, you can get to the point of where you can generate weather. You've got your radius of that you can set. You've got your departure weather, destination, on route. And all you would need to do is just click generate weather and it will change, change things every time that you do here. So you can see we had overcast, we had broken. Um, but let's go ahead and go uh, with this. Uh, it's kind of interesting we're not even going 50 miles but yet <laughs> but actually that's not it's relatively close i mean 18,000 broken 18,000 broken so if we were to uh make a further flight most likely you'd be seeing a, a bigger variety of, of weather so we'll leave it that and we'll uh click next here's our flight log telling us how much fuel, the flow, fuel flow, um, altitude that it's going to pretty much level us off at, and uh, estimated speed, and the trip. So it's just a direct flight. But remember, you know, you can sit there and you can add uh, waypoints and stuff to it in that other, in that other um, screen just like the later versions of Flight Simulator. So it's interesting that this was available as default uh, years before um, it showed up in Microsoft Flight Simulator as default. And this sets us right out in the water <laughs> after that. I don't know. I don't know why, why it does that. But you know, we can take a look at our windows. Uh, we, if you use the shift and the numerical keypad, you can look around, just like what we're doing here. That just looks weird. The clouds. In a way, it kind of looks cool, too. So, yeah, we're like out here in, <laughs> in the water. Uh, let's see, there are some other options here that I remember seeing. Okay, so under airspace we can select ATC communication and this is where um, it starts to get very cool for a uh, default feature in a flight simulator. This has got ATC well before Microsoft Flight Simulator had it. Um, and it's got voice. It's you can actually hear it. There's not a lot of voices. There's hardly any, uh, but it was more than what we ever had before at the time uh, until Pro Flight 98 came out. But you can select here, like oh, you want to do a full stop or touch and go. You can select what traffic pattern that you want to be brought into at the airport. Here you can have your comm radio automatically tuned. Uh, here you can ha um, be auto taxi to the runway. You might as well have this checked because there um, are no uh, taxiways from what I've seen so far. 
and you can turn on or off uh, the pilot reading back uh, the instructions that it receives. You can go in here and click on say again. You can request a new altitude. You can request a different runway and you can mark down here if you need to go around. Uh, and there are keyboard shortcuts to this as well. And they're included on the controls quick reference uh, card this right here so and it's in uh, ProPilot USA and it's also in the ProPilot boxed uh, version closed traffic I am guessing that means closing uh, airports off to traffic is what I'm I'm guessing that is I don't know I haven't messed with it um, have not gone through the manual because it's really huge <laughs> But uh, we have plenty of flights ahead of us, so I figure we can go through and read some of this stuff. We also have air traffic that you can turn on here, so you can listen to other pilots and you can see other aircraft. And then lastly, you got your navigational aids. 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 <laughs> you can type in the VORs that you're looking for. Uh, set up VOR tracking. This is interesting. I think we'll play, we won't play around with this now, but maybe we'll play with it um, on another flight. Uh, what's, you can select it here and then automatically have a tune in to that particular station. So that's kind of nice. You got your NDBs, ILSs kind of reminds me of X-Plane actually when you go into the map and you select the airport and you can automatically select it to tune in to the ILS that's kind of nifty actually and then uh, waypoints you can set up waypoints And I just realized that uh, we're on a completely uh, different plane than what we were when we started. Yeah, we went over to a beat well, which I love the beat. This is my favorite plane, the Beechcraft uh, V35. But we're going to switch ourselves back to the Cessna 172. Okay, uh, we're back here. I got that fixed up. Wound up having to change the the weather. Wound up changing, so we got slightly different weather than what we did before. But at least you know you can start seeing a little bit of a difference uh, when it comes to the weather. We're still parked out in the water, kind of annoying. So when we get started here, something important to note is your fuel selection. It's sitting over here on off took me a while to realize that it was sitting on off because I would start up the plane and it would shut off. I'll give you an example here. So you can click S for start or you can go over here and just click S. Of course it would help if you turn on the plane <laughs> with the red button and then click S. So like, oh great, it's starting. We're off to go and no, it shuts right off. So if you click uh, the F uh, key or you can just click on here you can set it to B for both and you'll be good to go and go and start it again and we're all set B is for brakes um, it actually tells you when you're hitting your brakes the uh, base uh, Pro Pilot uh, without its patches does not tell you that at all. Uh, if you patch it, then it will. So it's a little relieving to me to know that if I hit the brakes, it's actually working because I see it sitting on there. When it doesn't do that, I don't know, it doesn't seem like it works. And in the base version of Pro Flight, it wasn't working very well at all. Let's go ahead and turn on the power to our AV. 
Flight Information Foxtrot 230, Zulu weather, temperature 5, 5, 2.5, 1, wind 266 at 5, altimeter 29er, 8, 5, landing and departing runway 1, 8, departures contact ground on 121.8. Arrivals contact approach on 118.4. Advise controller on initial contact. You have information Foxtrot. So, that's Flight our ATIS information. information. Now, we're already set to go on the comm. Just click this. And your pilot will automatically reach out to the control tower. Okay, so 1120, this gets to be a little tricky. You can't click on each individual number here. It's like the first two and the last two. So they want us to go to 18. Oh, this automatically set it. That is interesting. That does not happen in the original version of ProFlight. Or ProPilot, I should say. You actually have to go in here and click... And it and it it's like oh okay eleven and then one zero, it takes a bit. Okay, we'll go ahead and change the radio. Okay, so here we are. We're actually facing the direction we don't want to be facing, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, we will go ahead and take off and turn around so that way uh, you can all see downtown Chicago. So we'll go ahead and throttle up. It's the same uh, keyboard controls on the numerical keypad, the three and the nine for the, for the throttle. Two and eight for the elevators. Four and six for the airlines. Cessna nine or seven alpha. Clear turn left base four one eight. Cessna nine or seven alpha. Clear jet five three fox truck. Continue left down wind four one eight. We'll call base. And I will say this. Five three fox truck. This. This flies a lot smoother than the uh, Pro Pilot does. Okay, so we need to change our radio again there. Yeah, we'll do that later. <laughs> In the meantime, we are looking at downtown Chicago.
I forget what direction he told us to go in. And here we are. We're kind of flying out. We're looking down. And then here's our here's our spot planes. That's by doing the um, Alt F7. Cessna 72 Lima, fly heading 290. Fly heading 290. Cessna 72 Lima. I don't see a way to change your call sign. But as I start learning more about it, um, you know, we'll figure it out together. The plane seems to handle a lot better too. It's it's smoother. It seems to fly a little bit more realistically uh, than the original Pro Pilot. The other original one just seems clunky for some reason. why it's all going through one channel. Okay. And there is Chicago O'Hare right in front of us. they're having a change or transponder was a 4016 so if I click on this do you see how it's going down whoa oh man I had it and then it switched on me There we go. So clicking one alters two of them. And then this one alters the other. Alright, so we'll go ahead and turn here. The scenery is uh, very impressive, actually, because you can see the detail in the ground there. I was able to see some freeways and turnoffs. That's a, that's a lot better than what was going on in Flight Simulators uh, 5, 95, and 98, which it had good textures, but this is a little bit more uh, truer to what you would expect when you fly in these areas. Those clouds are kind of ugly, though. I don't know if it's that particular setting or if the clouds are just ugly to begin with. Okay, 
Got a good look of uh, Chicago hair over there. It looks like there should be taxiways, um, but it's just part of the ground texture, if anything. Cessna 72 Lima, contact tower on 120.75. Good day. Contact tower on 120.75. Cessna 72 Lima, good day. Cessna 72 Lima, descend and maintain 3,000. Descend and maintain 3,000. Cessna 72 Lima. Cessna 72 Lima, fly heading 010. Fly heading 010. Cessna 72 Lima. Okay, now she's done talking. Our co-pilot has already changed the radio for us. We, all we need to do is just Cessna switch it from standby Lima, to... Fly heading 360. Fly heading 360. Cessna 72 Lima. Okay. We'll just switch it now before she starts talking again. Cessna 85 Kilo, continue left downwind for 2, set right, we'll call base. Cessna 72 Lima, fly heading 330. Fly heading 330, Cessna 72 Lima. Cessna 9 or 7 Alpha, fly runway heading and continue climb. Cessna 97 Alpha. Cessna 72 Lima, turn left heading 270. Turn left heading 270, Cessna 72 Lima. Cessna 85 Kilo, continue left downwind for 2, set right, we'll call base. Why is that lady still talking to us? How come this guy's not talking to us? I have no idea. We'll, s we'll cycle through the views uh, of the plane. This is your cow, so this is good for uh, landing. That's just if you want scenery by itself. We're switching ver via the F7. So we're seeing the whole control once again, everything down here. And we probably should have turned on our lights. Well, they're on now. And then you've got your flaps, and you can go ahead and click on this if you want. Or not. I, th I think you're supposed to click and drag this, but I would rather use the plus and minus keys on the um, plane itself. Cessna 72 Lima, fly heading 280. Fly heading 280. Cessna 72 Lima. Cessna 9 or 7 Alpha, continue left downwind for 2, set right, we'll call base. Cessna 97 Alpha. We go get a little bit of control so I did that so that way you could see what was happening and then we'll go ahead and do that so that way I can see a little bit more out the uh, the window So you can see it's kind of taking us around here. Although we're supposed to be landing on runway 27, so... So this is where you can select a different runway if you wanted to. But who knows what it's going to do if, uh, if we, we could be circling all over the airport before it decides to route us. <laughs> I think what we're seeing is two different layers of clouds here. Cessna 72 Lima, fly heading 270. Fly heading 270. Cessna 72 Lima. We'll go ahead Cessna and turn here. Cessna 72 Lima, climb and maintain 4,000. Climb and maintain 4,000. Cessna 72 Lima. Cessna 85 Kilo, cleared for the touch and go runway 2, set right. Cessna 9 or 7 Alpha, clear to turn left base for 2, set right. Cessna 9 or 7 Alpha. 
Now there are some instructions in the README file uh, where you can add your own voice uh, in here. So you can hear yourself. And the yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not that many audio files you would need to record. So naturally, if you can put your own voice in here, you can replace the other default voices with something else, too. Uh, and <clears throat> I think we'll do that as we're moving along and uh, maybe throw together some uh, brand new voices by using, uh, I don't know, ProFlight 98 or uh, Flight Simulator uh, 10. That'll be trippy, you know, hearing the uh, voices from the voices from FSX and prepared. Where in the world is she she taking us? We can see some texture up here. That's kind of, you know, it's well, it's the same kind of texture, you know. But still. 97 Alpha. Wow, are we getting something different here instead of wiggling waggling around? Cessna 72 Lima, climb and maintain 4,000. Climb and maintain 4,000. Cessna 72 Lima. Cessna 85 Kilo, continue left downwind for 2, set right, we'll call base. Okay. So it's like. It's circling us around the airport, is uh, what it's doing here. And like I said, we can turn that off and just fly from one airport to the other. Uh, we can also do VFR, which I've not tried that yet, so it'll be interesting to see how that works. And the heck is that? Cessna nine or seven Alpha, continue left downwind for two seven right. We'll call base. I have two cats in here, and one of them's inside of a box. One's inside of a box, being good. I thought the other was in a chair. I don't know what they're doing. We're doing that wig wagging and stuff again. This way and that way. And Nine seven Alpha. Wait a minute, where are we going? <laughs> I was expecting the lady to talk to us, not the guy. I totally spaced, I didn't even hear what he was saying. Oh, you know what? There's that control, uh, say again. Hold on here. Well... Oh, 
Okay, well, now we know. Cessna 85 Kilo, cleared for the touch and go runway 2, set right. Cessna 9 or 7 Alpha, cleared to turn left base for 2, set right. Cessna 9 7 Alpha. Okay, so we're moving right along here. So we don't need to do say again, but if we needed to do say again, kilo. Fly runway heading and continue climb. we can come up here to airspace, ATC communication, and just click on say again. Um, also, here we can select new altitude, uh, different runway. Doesn't look like it's giving us an option to change that at the moment. Cessna 72 Lima, fly heading 060. Fly heading 060. Cessna 72 Lima. I'm not sure what type of pattern would have you fly over the airport, but that's apparently what we're doing. Cessna 72 Lima, fly heading 030. Fly heading 030. Cessna 72 Lima. These course uh, adjustments remind me of FSX and P3D, where they, here, move this way, then now do move this way, and then move this way, and then move this way. Cessna 72 Lima, enter left downwind for 2, set right. Enter left downwind for 2, set right. Cessna 72 Lima. Cessna 72 Lima, turn right heading 110. Turning right to heading 110. Oh, did you see the uh, freeway? It was right over there. Bring our throttle down a little bit here. We're over 4,000. Can't really see a thing behind us. The chair's in the way. Three five zero. Okay. Right about there. If you look, you could see the some of the roadways and stuff there. I bet he's annoyed. He's because <laughs> he's being flown all over the place. Cessna 72 Lima, turn left heading 270. 
Are you serious? We're at 4,000 and it's now telling it? Ooh. Well, there's one thing I don't like about this. The original had us going down. I don't want to sit here and try to do another... Okay, so we're going to be coming in really hot here. <laughs> Cessna 85 Kilo, cleared for the touch and go runway 2, set right. Cessna 9 or 7 Alpha, cleared to turn left base for 2, set right. Cessna 9 or 7 Alpha. Cessna 72 Lima, turn at any intersection and contact ground on 121.75. <laughs> <laughs> Holy macro. Cessna 85 Kilo, fly runway heading and continue climb. Well, at least the brakes work. Did they tell us to go down in altitude and we just didn't? Maybe I wasn't paying attention. Oh well. Anyway, we're landed. I think I'm supposed to change the comm radio. I don't know. He didn't really say anything. Wait a minute. Hold on. Why am I going that direction? Oh, am, is it because I'm not looking out the... No. Look at this. We're... What's going on? What's going on? We're moving to the side here. Why is that? See, this is beginning to do some weird stuff now, too. Cessna, nine or seven alpha. Why are we going that direction? <laughs> I agree with you, 97 Alpha. I don't know what's going on, but we're going in a direction we don't want to go. Cessna, eight five kilo. Continue left downwind for two seven right. We'll call base. So we landed, and now we're just kind of scooting. I don't know. I'm. I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, even though I am turning. He seems kind of annoyed, just like uh, we are here. Yeah, it's, it's like now it doesn't seem like it wants to acknowledge the fact that we're on the ground and that we're trying to turn. Cessna 85 Kilo, continue left downwind for 2, set right, we'll call base. And even using the rudder keys don't seem to be doing anything either. I'm using the air lawns, they're not doing anything. So yeah, this maybe we damaged the aircraft. I I I I don't know. <laughs> it's bleeding. <laughs> it's bleeding up here on the top. Let me see if I can get us a good view of the plane. Now if I move this, you see what it's doing? Why are we moving like that? I don't know. <laughs> I'll turn one way and I'll turn the other and um, well we're still kind of going that direction so <laughs> Cessna 9 or 7 Alpha continue left downwind for 2 <laughs> set right we'll call base <laughs> we 9 7 Alpha we're having fun okay so anyway <laughs> Cessna 85 Kilo, clear to turn left base for 2, set right. I think we will go ahead and shut things off here.
So we'll switch our power to the AV uh, radios off. And I noticed that... Oh, no, that's interesting. Okay, so on the uh, default pro uh, pilot, switching the magnetos off didn't turn it off. You had to actually lean uh, the fuel. Getting the flaps up. And, well, we're here sliding around on Chicago, <laughs> Chicago air. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, so... These are not perfected uh, flights at all. What you're seeing here is the actual honest experience of playing this flight simulator. So all the little difficulties and stuff that you're seeing is all honest stuff. So maybe your experience will be a little bit different, uh, but this is giving you an honest look at this old simulator. There are great things about the simulator. Um, I love the ATC about it. Uh, the flight planning is great. But there's just problems with the actual flight part of it. It seems to handle okay up in the air. What the heck is going on on the ground? I have no idea. I don't know what it is. Maybe we hit too hard. I don't know. So far in the base pro pilot and the pro pilot USA, it doesn't seem to like to be controlled on the ground for whatever reason. So anyway, uh, that is it for this video. Um, if you found this uh, video interesting or useful, please give it a, a like, thumbs up, and uh, subscribe. Be a part of the killer community and hit the notification bell so that way you know when a new video is uploaded to the channel. Until next time, I'll see you later.